Hey friends, thanks so much for being here. We have a special segment for you today. Gabe and I are here to talk about premature ejaculation, also known as rapid ejaculation. And in this special video series, we are going to be going through the definition of premature ejaculation, the physical considerations, the psychological considerations, and then experimenting, experimenting with strategies and tools for premature ejaculation. Before we get started, Gabe, would you like to introduce yourself and what sure. you do? Yeah, I would love to. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I'm excited. It's uh, it's an honor. Um, my name is Gabe Yandel. I'm a licensed marital and family therapist, uh, professor, um, and guest lecturer. So I do a, my work is primarily related to sexual health, um, and I do some fertility stuff as well. I'm in private practice um, in Oklahoma, which is where I'm from, where I live, and uh, I teach graduate and uh, students and post grad uh, supervision while working on their licensure and things like that. Fantastic. Again, such a special series to do with you, Gabe. I think this is going to be really helpful for the folks out there combining the psychology, the sex therapy side of things, relational side of things to the physical therapy, sex counseling. Uh, what a wonderful blend of powerhouse here. So yeah. <laughs> let's dive into it. Let's talk about the definition around the definition or definitions of PE and the, the reporting around it. Cause I've, I've read a lot of literature and it's all over the place. I think the most recent one said 20 to 30% globally, but it is the most distressing concern for men is PE. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely something that uh, it's it's real and something that a lot of folks deal with. Uh, but it's even though it's a real thing, that doesn't mean that it's not something that can't be worked on and and that folks can't develop and kind of work their way through. But we also have a lot of social expectation that goes into how long we expect men to last when engaging in sex. That sometimes can cause a little bit of over reporting. Because, you know, really premature ejaculation or rapid ejaculation, we're talking about um, orgasming or ejaculating with very minimal stimulation. And sometimes that even means like, you know, uh, rubbing through the pants, mm -hmm. you know, like taking pants off to engage in something sexual and there's an ejaculation. Whereas sometimes the reports we're getting are, well, you know, I, I didn't last very long and it was much shorter, you know, it was maybe a couple of minutes. And that might not quite fit with what a, a, a premature ejaculation diagnosis would be. Right, right. So there's a lot of uncertainty. And again, as far as definitions go and who's defining it and what practice, right? Because it's going to be very different for, let's say, a urologist or a primary care provider and, and their knowledge, which we know that sexual health training is not part of the traditional medical curriculum. So right. there's very little of that to begin with. Um, and there's only a focus on the biomedical or the medical aspects of rapid ejaculation or premature ejaculation. So let's talk about generalized versus situational. Can we, can we unpack that? What are the differences? Right. Yeah. So anytime that we're talking about uh, a sexual functioning difficulty, there are some different layers that we want to look at. So Premature ejaculation that's generalized means that it's basically always existed and in all contexts. So, and we'd actually call that chronic generalized. So it means that in every way that I've ever engaged in something sexual, I've had this issue. Whereas situational might be um, with a particular partner, or maybe, you know, my partner and I like to be adventurous. And I found that uh, I, some of the premature ejaculation shows up when we're you know, in a public setting or something engaging in something sexual, which by the way is risky, but can be fun. And there could be some legal mm -hmm. things if you got in trouble, but uh, you know, as long as you're an adult and you. It's good central. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's unpack what really is the distressing part of coming too soon. Right. Yeah. Like what are the expectations around men and sexual performance as far as sexual scripts that we are basically fed. <laughs> Let's yeah. just put it that way. Let's right. talk about that. I think, well, and for men, I think in particular, a big part of the messaging comes from 
this over-sexualized culture and from pornography, really. And so in these situations, um, you're viewing maybe another person engaging in a sex act as a performance, as an mm -hmm. actor, with a lot of things in the background that you might not know that are going on. Right. Um, and who's, you know, it total almost in total control of when they're going to orgasm. And, and it might not be for the whole video that you're watching until the very end. So some of that is the sociological expectation that I'm supposed to last a long time. Um, but I think some of the other pieces are a lot of partners, you know, men in these situations really want to have a mutual experience with their partner and they want to share in that satisfaction and they feel like something's lost both for them and for their partner if they uh, ejac ejaculate prematurely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you so much for bringing up the again, where we're learning about sex, what our expectations around sex are for both, for all parties involved, right? So it's not just the, the person experiencing the early ejaculation, but it also is the expectations of their partner or partners and how that influences the dynamic. Because I heard Dr. Lindsay Doe and she has a YouTube channel called Sexplanations, love her. Uh, she's a, psycho a sexologist um, and a sex educator. And she talked about like reframing coming too soon or rapid ejaculation. Like why is that even seen as something that's uh, a negative? Why is that in a negative sexual connotation like where did that even right. come from because some people have you know she said something about engines v12 engines versus you know sometimes you want a bicycle or maybe you want to go on foot right. and take your time yeah. you know and right. and and i think embracing that of embracing the fluidity and the differences in mm -hmm. our our sexual organs how they function and also the relational dynamics uh, with with all of that as well. I think having some sexual fluidity and flexibility and not focusing so much on performance, right? Because it's so performance based. Like sex is, is for for men particularly, I feel like so performance based that where's the pleasure? Yeah. <laughs> where's the focus on pleasure and turning towards each other as an intimate team or a sexual intimate team? Yeah rather than turning away or again, having this be some sort of act or, you know, form of entertainment, so to speak, right. That right. we may be involved in. So, right. I think that's a, a great point. And when we take some of that performance off the table, the anxiety trigger that sometimes triggers the premature ejaculation mm -hmm. is reduced. So if I feel so confident that I can give pleasure to my partner, regardless of what my orgasm status is on a particular engagement, mm -hmm. then uh, that's going to start reducing that pressure overall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, great, Gabe. So in the next video, we're going to share with y'all the physical considerations of premature ejaculation, where we're going to go to be discussing pelvic muscles, um, the influence of hormones, stress response, as, as Gabe was mentioning, uh, sensory signaling, and then some comorbidities that might predispose someone to rapid ejaculation like pain. So we're going to unpack that in the next video. See you then. Okay. We're talking about the physical can physical considerations um there are a lot of pieces i bet that play a role in premature ejaculation ejaculation process right so it starts off with either a psychological arousal right uh, mentally or a physical genital stimulation so you have sensory uh, here's a penis all right just want to say it out there 